right, everybody, welcome to uh, the webinar for today. I'm joined by uh, Mark Fenton. Hey, hey, how are you? And uh, glad to have Mark with us here. Mark's been a uh, veteran trader for a long time, and we're happy to, he's been with us for a long time at Shared and Mentoring. Great trader. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Amazon and Apple, even though Mark and I probably will do nothing in those two. But since most of you guys want to talk about Amazon and Apple, we'll talk about it with you. What we're talking about is really a, you know, let's, let's put it in perspective. We're not looking at where Amazon and Apple are going to be in a year and six months and three months. This is strictly a binary event. One day, roll the dice. That's it, right? It's a spec play, right? It's a binary event, right? It has nothing to do with where Apple or Amazon will be next week or in six months. It comes down to, it's like a casino, right? What do the analysts think Amazon's and Apple's earnings are? Even if Apple's earnings are good, right? This is how earnings works. If Apple's earnings are good, but they're less than expectations, the stock could go down. If they beat expectations, it could go up. So we'll look at a couple trades. Again, I think anything, Mark, how would you kind of, your overall look when you think of earnings and opportunities or you're looking at Apple and Amazon tonight, what are your general thoughts on it and why, why don't you jump in for all the free money? I'm joking. <laughs> well, I've just found over time and I've done a lot of these at best and I, I really don't even think I'm 50-50 with them because you just don't know what they're going to do or how far they're going to go. And the thing is, in this environment, it gets even harder to tell because of what you just said. No matter what they do, good, bad, or indifferent with their earnings call, they could skyrocket or plummet. Right. Um, right. No, it does not matter if they missed everything. They could, <laughs> it makes no sense. So you don't know. I mean, one would think Amazon, I can't imagine that they wouldn't have had a good quarter. If they can't make money now, I don't know what to say, you know, when yeah. everybody's buying online. What? It's it's not really, don't you agree? It's not really a matter of if they made money. If they oh, no. made as much money, you know, if the analysts are expecting them to make, you know, I'm just throwing these out there, you know, 10 billion. And and if the analysts expect 10 billion and they only made 8 billion, right? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> they could take the stock down. So it's kind of crazy. Well, let's take yeah. a look at Apple folks real quick here. They're expecting, if you can see here, I'm looking at think or swim. We'll just talk through a couple scenarios. This thing in, in Think or Swim, it gives you, they call it like a market maker move. So based on past earnings and what, how the options are priced, they're looking for about a 12, up down or 12 down could be expected. Does everybody see that? So they're expecting, uh, it could be up or down $12, that would be normal, right? And up or down $12, on a $383 stock, it'd be about 3%. So really what it comes down to earnings is if you think they'll be bigger than a 3% move, you might do some speculative strategy, buy a call, buy a put, buy a straddle, which is an at the money call and put, buy a strangle, an out of the money call and put, something a little more directional, right? If you think it's going to move less than expectations, less than 3%, you might put an iron condor or a calendar. So there's nothing wrong with this. It's just how do you look at this? We look at these trades as speculative trades. And so because you can have a big gap tomorrow, I would just say, you know, let's say I wanted to allocate $1,000 of risk to Apple that would limit the amount of contracts I do. So it's just how you play them. It's not that, uh, so let's just like take a look at something. So if you look at the price chart, you can see, okay, Apple since the last earnings, all right, so we're in what month, Mark? We're in July, so last in July, month. yeah. So April was the last one. So if you look at like, would that have been the last one, April, or maybe a little bit? That seems like it would be. Oh, well, earnings. So this looks like on April 30th was the last one. That would right? line up well. Yeah, so April 30th, and it doesn't look like a huge 
So April 30th, it closed at 293. In the next day, it opened at uh, 286. So down maybe six bucks. So it moved from the close of trading to the opening the next day. Am I correct here, folks? It moved less than expectation. So that's what we're looking at. The close of trading tonight to the opening tomorrow. Um, and so let's look at a couple different ideas. With the market maker move of 12, let's say we went and did something called an iron condor. That would be if we thought that, okay, I don't, let's say I take the view, I don't think it's going to move more than the expectations of up or down $12, which is like 3%. If that was my premise, something like an iron condor where you're selling an out of the money call and put far away. So let's just take a scenario, folks, just to show you how this thing works. So let's say I sell a, a strike, like the three, let's just take, for example, the Let's go the 360 strike, the 360 put in Apple, and I'm going to buy the 355 put. So I sell the 360 put in Apple, and the July 31 expiration expires tomorrow. And the 360 put has a delta of nine. And that just means that there's only a 9% probability that we're going to finish under 360 tomorrow, right? By the end of the day. It could, but that's, that's the premise. So we're far out of the money. And with the market maker move of $12, our short strike is $22 away. I'm just selling. So Petru said, why, th why the 360 strike? Because I'm trying to do something more than a standard deviation out of the money. I want to make it high probability. So to make it high probability, I want to choose maybe a delta less than you know 15 or less, that would give me big probabilities. Uh, in the, so let's just, in my favor, but let's just finish the put side and then we'll get Mark make a few comments here, or the call side. So let's say the call side I go, uh, or the put side I used a, what did I use here, Mark? I used a eight or nine delta and the call side Let's say I use a eight, uh, well, let me tweak these a little bit. Four, I'm gonna use a 10 delta in the calls, which is the 405 calls. So sell the 405s, buy the 410s. And on the put side, sell the, uh, I sold the 360 puts and I'm buying the 355. So I sold an eight delta. But if you look at this, here's what it comes out to. Okay, so here's what I'm doing folks with Apple at $383, I'm selling the out of the money calls that expire tomorrow at the 405 strike. If I sell the 360 put. So again, all that matters is to me is where it opens tomorrow. I'm not looking a day after and it doesn't matter. This expires tomorrow. I'd be getting out at the opening tomorrow. So I've got, what is this, 22 points on the upside from where we're trading at. And I've got 23 points on the downside. So Mark Wright, much more than the expected move of 12 bucks. Much more, right. Yeah, and so, and I'm selling, but here's the key, I should have got more for this. In this case, I'll just, I mean, this isn't, for every one I do, that says, let's say it's a 60 cent credit. I could have used a better example, but my risk here, I'm doing five wide strikes. So that's $500 less 60. So the capital involved with this would be $440. And again, $440 to make 60. Again, remember, there's a saying in life and in options. You can't have your cake and eat it too, right? If you want a good risk reward, you're going to have a stinky probabilities. If you're going to have good probabilities, you're going to have a stinky risk reward. Right? You can, let me say it again in English, you can't have your cake and eat it too. For every, so if I want to risk $1,000, that's in my spec portfolio, I'd probably do two of these because I have $440 of risk. But so you're talking $60 divided by 440, that's about 13% in one day. Is 13% bad in one day? Yes or no? 
is 13. Sounds okay to me, Dan. Yeah. How many of you guys make 13% <laughs> in the bank? Probably not too much. But the point is, yeah, you got probabilities in our favor, right? It's probably going to hit. It's probably going to win. But for a spec trade, it's not bad. Do I think it'll win? Yes. But here's the key. Because it's a crapshoot around earnings, I'm not going to risk what I would in a SPX iron condor because with an X, SPX iron condor, you don't have these crazy gaps usually, and I can adjust them. Here, it's going to open up tomorrow morning wherever it decides to open up, right? So because I'm concerned about the gap risk, even though the probabilities are really in my favor, what do I want to risk? I assume I could lose it all. I risk about a thousand. If I risk about thousand dollars, if each one iron condor is four forty, I do two of them. But I can make thirteen percent. Kevin says Apple Calendar is a better bet. Let's take a look at that, right? Let's take Calendar's a look at your earnings. Yeah, calendars. But let's talk, let's take a look at that and analyze it, and then I'm going to ask everybody how good it is. You know. So again, let's analyze everything, right? So. How do we lose tomorrow? I need Apple under 360 or over 405, right? But my goal would be, you know, I don't think I'd hang around to the end of the day, right? If I can get out in the morning. But again, if I want to get a better yield on the iron condors, what could I do? And then I'll get to a calendar. If I want to get a better yield, Mark, instead of selling the 405 calls, right? So let's go over this real quick. Instead of selling the 405 calls, I can, if I want a bigger credit, but less probabilities, instead of selling the 405s, maybe I'll sell the 400 calls, right? Right. And buy the 405s. And then the put side, instead of selling the 360 puts, which are an 8 delta, I'll sell the 365 puts that are a 13 delta. So instead of getting 60 cents, instead of getting 60 cents, now I get a dollar sixteen. And I only have a dollar sixteen or a dollar seventeen, and my capital in the trade would be about three hundred and you know eighty five dollars. I can make a a dollar hundred and fifteen dollars divided by three eighty five. My, now my yield goes up to thirty percent. So I give up a little bit of probabilities. I still cover the expected move. Four hundred on the upside is seventeen points. The expected move is twelve or the market maker move is 12. Um, the short put is 365. That gives me 18 points. It covers the move. So you could do that. Now let's check calendar. First of all, like Emily says, I wouldn't use a calendar when I expect the vol crush, but so let's take a look at this again. This is earnings, right? Let's analyze what's going to happen. All right. So let's say I do a calendar and I'm going to sell the strike that expires tomorrow. So let's just say we go at the money three. Let's just look at something at the money. And I would only do an at the money calendar if I, right, Mark, if I felt that. Um, it wasn't going to move that much. wasn't going to move that much. And I didn't really have an opinion. <laughs> so, so if I do it at the money, I sell the, so how do you analyze this? I sell the July 31st that expires tomorrow. I'm selling the 385 calls and I'm going to buy, let's see what I could buy. I can buy the August 7 that expires in eight days. Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm buying the August 7 expires a week from Friday. I'm selling the July 31st that expires tomorrow in the calls, the 385 strike. And the purchase price is $2 and 35 cents. Everybody see that? Now, let's analyze that. If we close at 385 tomorrow, let's just take the best case. At the strike, on a $235 adjustment or, or, or debit, uh, it is saying that I'm going to make over 500 bucks, which would be two, 300%. But let's take a look at this. Has Apple moved less than one or two dollars in earnings in a long time? Yes or no? Can we expect only a one or two dollar move tomorrow? 
What are the chances of that? They're not really good. All right, but let's look at the chart. So if we look at the option volatility in Apple, it doesn't really show that it's moved up a lot, has it, Mark? Right, looks like the volatilities are in the mid 30s, right? Do you see that? Uh huh. So let's just look at this a second. So it says the vols are in the mid 30s. Here's what's going to happen, folks. It says the vols are in the mid 30s. So let's say 35. Right now, our long option is 40, our short option is 62. So what's going to happen is tomorrow, the volatility of your short's going to go to zero because it'll be done by tomorrow. And then the volatility of your long will probably come down five or six points. Is everybody with me on that? And then I'm going to go change the graph. Does everybody understand what I just said? The volat So we're going to look at the graph at expiration like it is, right? We already know at expiration, the graph is saying, this is the expiration graph, this is the graph today. It's already saying that the volatility of your shorts will go to zero, but the volatility of your longs, I figure will come out at least five or six points. So to get a more accurate picture on what this thing looks like, I'm gonna go decrease the volatilities by six points, right? So if I do this, what did it do? What it did was these expiration break evens, they were out here they moved in quite a bit. So what is this saying? It's saying the expiration break evens on this trade, this calendar, when you lower the volatility, right, are about 372 on the downside, down 12, and 398 on the upside, up 12 or four, up 14. So here's what's interesting, folks. Isn't it shocking that the market is basically pr pricing the break-evens of this calendar at the expected move? Does everybody see that? <laughs> what, what, what does that mean, folks? It means it's an efficient market, right? So again, La Emily says, I was always taught calendars were best when we should ex expect vol to increase. Well, again, Emily, here's the discussion. In Chicago, Emily, you can go buy baseball bats. In Chicago, Emily, most people would think, if I said, Emily, what do you think baseball bats are for? Dan, they're for playing baseball. Well, in Chicago, there's two purposes for baseball bats. Gangs have a strong demand for baseball bats. They like to beat each other with baseball bats. I don't know if you knew that. So doing calendars around earnings are totally different than doing calendars not around earnings. So this is a different discussion, right? You generally like calendars when you expect the vol to increase. Again, your learning of calendars, Emily, has absolutely nothing to do with calendars around earnings. Nothing, right? Absolutely nothing, right? So around earnings, it comes down to this. When would somebody put an at the money calendar on an Apple mark going into earnings like tonight? What would, what would have to be their opinion? The bottom line is this. You would only do a calendar like this at the money, a range bound trade like this, if I expected the move to be less than the expected move of $12. It's a stinking crapshoot on a binary event, right? So would I or Mark normally do an at the money calendar on Apple for earnings? No, All right? Um, Bessie says, can you go over that reducing the vol adjustment? I didn't catch it. All right, all I'm doing is, Bessie, I was trying to realistically assess the graph in lieu of earnings, right? The graph at the brokerage firm, nobody told the software at TD Ameritrade that the export, that they're looking at the graph saying all the volatility would come out of your July 31, but nobody told the software that the augs are going to come, the August 7 will probably come down five points of volatility. 
So I have to properly tweak the Greeks and stuff to get a realistic picture of what's going to happen, right? And that's why I think for beginning traders, this stuff can be very hairy, right? Hairy, hairy, hairy. <laughs> um, so again, this is earnings, going into earnings tonight. Now, Mark's done these before. Let's take a look at one. How about if we said, let's take a vote here, Mark. All right. Folks, A, I think Apple's going up tomorrow. B, I think Apple's going down for earnings, just this event. Take a vote. A, I think Apple's going up. B, I think it's going down. Take a vote. A, up, B, down. A, up, B, down. Mark, I'm not sure if we got 50-50 here. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if this is, yeah, we got a lot. So let's just take a scenario. Now we'll show you a trade that you could do really well, but you got you to gotta hit it, right? So let's say Mark and I said, so the expected move, again, this is spec any way you look at it. Um, the expected move is almost $12, right? And so let's just say we said, Mark and I, let's say we say, I think, we think it's going up. We think it's going up. Well, then you got to make it, do you think, how high do you think it's going up? But we could put it right at the expected move, right? That's what some people do. You used to do it like that, Mark, didn't you, sometimes? Did yeah, you I usually it? put uh, like a fly at the expected move. Yeah, did you do it like, would, you, we'd, would we do it in July or maybe Aug 7? Because you, you got to kind of hit a bullseye if you do it tomorrow. I would normally do it for, particularly, I particularly liked these where you'd be right in the fly if you were correct on expiration day. So I would pick the 31st. Then you make the most, right? Right. So let's look at this, folks. So let's say we say we're going to, we're going to, we think it's going to go up and near the expected move, right? And if we did that, here's how you do it. We do a, a directional butterfly. We set the short strike at 385, or the short strike up $12, which would be around, if we're at 384, 396. So close to 396, right? And so I can either pick 395 or 397 and a half. Let's just say I go 395. And then maybe I could buy my longs around it, let's just say I go 10 points away. And let's just take a look at this. And I'll explain this. So if you look at this, folks, all right, we're looking, this is today, 729. We're at 384. We're saying if it goes up to near 395, which would be the expected move, we can buy this butterfly for $1.92, or let's just call it $2. Oh, thank you. Um, let me take the volatility. Now, all right, since this is all in July 31st, right, this is what it's gonna be, folks. I'm paying $2 for this butterfly, right? And if we're in anywhere in this range tomorrow, on a $200 investment, depending on where we are in this range, you know, if we come anywhere near 395, right, Mark, there's a good chance to make, you know, 60, 70 to 100%. Oh, yeah, you can, you can hit a home run for yeah. sure. Yeah, but again, folks, remember, so you're, you're betting, you know, if you're bullish, put a butterfly 12 points up. If you're bearish, put a 12 points down. Again, there's different ways to do it, but get, again, remember, I mean, this is going to be, if you're looking to hit a home run versus a single on an iron condor, this is the way to do it, right? But again, it's the same thing. And the iron condor for $1,000, folks, I think my credit was a little over a dollar. On my $1,000, what's the most I can make, folks, on the iron condor? investing a thousand dollars a couple hundred dollars do you agree mm -hmm. if i invest a thousand dollars of speculative money that would be two iron condors 
with a credit, let's say a dollar 15 or 20, maybe I'd make $230 on two iron condors. Does everybody remember that? Give me a yes or a no. Okay, yes. All right. But if I'm spending $2 on a butterfly, I can do five of these, right? If I want to spend a grand, I can do five of these. So five at $2 would be a thousand. So instead of putting a thousand dollars into an iron condor, and I can only make 230, but I got a high probability of getting it, I could put a little more directional, put a thousand into five butterflies. And now I've got the chance, instead of making $200, to make close to two grand, somewhere in here, a thousand to two thousand dollars. Does everybody see that? A huge potential yield, right? And I could do both directions. But the point is, folks, so you, everybody would say, so would you guys do A, the iron condor, or B, the butterfly for $1,000? A, the iron condor, B, the butterfly. I'll be honest with you. I would probably go B also, only because... The probabilities are there with the iron condors, but I'm, we do we do iron condors and you know range bound trades in SPX every day that can give us eight to ten percent. If I'm going to do something around earnings, I'm going for the homer. Don't you agree, Mark? No, oh, I think so. That's it's a lottery pull. You might as well go for it. Yeah, you might as well go because, I mean, anyways. So that's a little bit of this. Um, so again. This has nothing, Emily says, anybody ever get burned in an iron condor? Again, this has nothing to do, back to my baseball bats. This has nothing, we do iron condors are a great strategy, has nothing to do with that. Iron condors around earnings are using baseball bats to beat people. Iron condors on a normal daily basis in SPX are using baseball bats to play baseball, right? It has <laughs> nothing to do with that, right? So if, I, if we put this on tomorrow and we were near, you know, and we were near four, we were near 395 at the opening tomorrow, whatever, anywhere near there, how would I close it? Here's how I'd close it. I'd say create opposite order, right? I would just sell it out, right? So I just close the, you know, does everybody get that? It just you, you just close the trade, right? It's you you just do the opposite, right? So I mean, again, there's many things you can do. Um, there's many things you can do on these things, but again, the important thing is that you evaluate the risk, and you're only risking what what you you know you're basically saying I could lose it all. And that's what I'm going to risk. When I put iron condors on, I never make the assumption I could lose everything, right? I don't know a student who's lost everything they can lose on an iron condor. Do you, Mark, in 10 years? I don't think uh, I... I don't know. I can't think of one right off. Yeah, right. But it's but earnings is a different ball game. Um, folks, let me just say this. Uh, check out Shared and Mentoring um, when we're done. Uh, we have two... Uh, really good classes starting next week. They'll go three-week classes, one on long diagonals, uh, which is a covered right alternative, and one on balanced butterflies, which is a range-bound income trade. And I think they're, they're very complementary strategies, one with the view of an investor. Uh, you're taking a long-term approach on the market, like the long diagonal covered right, neutral to bullish on the market. And then the butterflies would be for consistent weekly income. Mark will be helping me with the butterflies. And uh, I, I think, I really believe they're complementary. And that's why when you go to the front page, if you get them both, it'd be a 20% discount. I just think those are two strategies you can do together and basically have your own little mini options portfolio. So check on that. Um, but anyways, be careful with earnings coming up. And um, I'm not, I don't have a position on an Apple I really don't. Uh, I, I just don't have any great feel for it, right? And um, uh, not that you agree. Can't. Again, it, you look at it like it's what would we call it? Funny money, right? If you want to speculative, if 
you want to risk $500 or $1,000 or $200, but make sure that's the risk, right? And make sure you understand the risk. Make sure you understand how you make money, how you don't, what could happen. So anyways, well, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for Mark uh, joining me today. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time.